Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome. I wanted to actually welcome you to my trading floor and my bookshelf, but more importantly, I want to give you a behind the scenes uh, video, which is roughly 15 minutes. It was actually taken from a segment of one of our pre-market game plan meetings where we talk about stocks and we do a lot of teaching as well. Uh, but one of the main concepts that came out of this was something from this book, uh, Tape Reading and Market Tactics, which was written in 1931 originally. Um, the topic that we discuss in this segment of the game plan that you're about to watch uh, is about order flow. It's about understanding where the smart money, where the deep pockets are doing something, where their footprints are and how to track them. And I promise you, once you watch this video, you will never look at charts again the same way. You'll actually have the veil pulled back uh, and you'll be like, how did I ever place some of those trades in the first place? Because there was no order flow or maybe there's just a little bit of order flow and maybe you sized up just too much. Uh, and now your eyes have been awoken and you're going to actually see everything from the perspective of, is there actually money behind that idea that I am just riding their coattails and piggybacking what I might call the easier trades where we can expect follow through. And remember, the quality of the idea is the real risk in the trade. And when you're tracking the smart money footprints, it becomes 10 times easier to have that conviction to hold those winning trades. So enjoy this copy of um, a 15 minute part of our pre-market game plan meetings. Uh, and if you wanna learn about being involved in the meetings and attending the meetings, click the link below the video. I'd love to see you on the other side. And if you have any questions about this, definitely click down in the comments and leave a comment and give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you hit the alerts because we have a lot of good education like this coming out as well as stock picks every day, Monday through Friday. All right, have an awesome day and I'll speak to you soon. I hope you enjoy this as much as we enjoy doing it. Uh, let's see, if there's no order flow, doesn't that logically reduce liquidity because smart money isn't trading? No, 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 no. Order flow is the definition of order flow. The way that we use it is order. And let me, let me actually, I'll take a step back. When I had my office in New York City, I was a heavy NASDAQ trader and we were basically just trading momentum. When all of those specialists came onto my trading floor, they literally told us and taught us what order flow was. If you can close your eyes and imagine that you have 5 million shares you need to buy, you're not going to go to the market and say, okay, put a bid out there for 5 million shares. I need to buy Cisco, whatever the stock happens to be. The brokers and the specialists on the floor, whether or a NASDAQ market maker, a specialist, a broker on the floor, or even just a general stock broker, they get paid for order flow. The better job that they fill those orders around VWAP and the best prices available for that day, the large institutions will continue to give them order flow. So they're getting paid commissions on the order flow. So the order flow is buying and selling pressure over time. Liquidity, what you're talking about here, is the average daily volume. There's a difference between the two. Okay, so order flow in the sense that we're talking about it here and specifically on the monthly and weekly charts, is how long has order flow been obvious in that stock, which is different from the daily liquidity. So when we're talking about order flow, as I mentioned in a couple of stocks before, um, and let's use MRVL as an example, probably a really good example. This is two days of order flow. This is five days of order flow. The last couple of months of order flow have been a mess. So Aldo's question is a really good one. And if he's asking it, that means a lot of people have been asking it, but I want to, or, or thinking about it. So the distinction of average daily liquidity with volatility is different from, can we spot order flow over time? And order flow over time is when smart money is making higher highs, paying higher highs over a day, two days, two weeks, two months, and holding higher lows. So if you can close your eyes and visualize, that's why I spend so much time on order flow. They literally drilled into my trading floor. Stocks move because of institutions, deep pockets, smart money, sending order flow to the market, paying higher prices and creating. They are the demand that we're tracking and following their footprints. So that's a really good. I'm glad you brought that up, Aldo. I don't know if that was educational for everybody or, or a question that you had, but there's a difference. OK, so when we're mentioning order flow. It's those order flow, those orders going down to the floor. And I know a lot more of that is digital now. Probably most of it's digital, but there are still market makers. There's still specialists. There's still specialist companies. There's still brokers. That is what order flow is. That's why 
That's why you don't really hear me say trend that much because I want you to look at a chart deeper than just saying uptrend or downtrend. It's so generic that it does. It got to a point where it doesn't even mean anything anymore. That's why I say order flow. If you can visualize a, somebody with a 5 million share order and Aldo is the specialist in IBM, for argument's sake, and there's a whole bunch of floor brokers around his post on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and there's floor brokers and there's floor clerks, and they say, Aldo, you know, somebody sends to the floor, let's say Dilip, Dilip is a hedge fund, he sends 100000 to the floor, and Aldo, using trader language, says, do you have more behind it? And he said, there's more order flow coming if you fill that for me where I want to get filled, meaning get out there and get me as close to the VWAP as possible. Get me the best trade today. So Aldo's going to fill that order. All the brokers are going to work that order. And now they're going to see if the phone rings again. Again, I'm dating myself a little bit, but it's not the context of the visualization I want everybody to have is what's important. Give me more order flow because I filled it at the best available price today. They get paid commissions on that order flow, but the order flow are the actual orders that move the market. That's why our community uses the term order flow. That's why I am constantly telling you higher highs, higher lows. I don't use those terms lightly at all. I use those terms so specifically to train your eye. Is somebody with deep pockets actually moving the stock and paying higher prices? That's order flow coming into the market. Who is it? We don't care. <laughs> All we know is somebody paid higher prices and had enough buying power to keep it there, and they did it again. That's how you visualize order flow. So when you're looking at a chart, and specifically in a window like this that I've been training on everybody for a year now, we are literally looking to see how consistent is the order flow. Now, the one book that I recommend – all the time. And I might have mentioned it in the course if I did or if I didn't. Um, it's called, uh, the author's name is Humphrey B. Neal. Uh, uh, tape, reading and, tape reading and market tactics, I think it's called. Um, I'll, I'll post it later. I'll, I'll give you the, defini the definition of it. But he does the best explanation I've ever seen, period. And that book was written in like the 1930s, where he says that you have to look at stock prices and the power behind the buying and selling pressure that moves it, which is why the price itself is not as meaningful. And this is, this is also where you hear me talk about um, what's the real price that stock is having a hard time getting through. What's the real price? It could, you know, is it all the way up here? Well, if it only traded there for one day and it was super light volume, that's not the real price. What's the real price the stock is struggling at the way he talks about it in the book is he said, if you can visualize a stock printing on the tape and, and, and 100 shares traded there at that price and somebody gives it meaning because they're, they're just lazy technical analysts and be like, oh, yeah, that's the high. That's the significant price. But even our, during the day, you look, oh, yeah, it went all the way up to that, that price, but it traded 200 shares. That doesn't mean anything. He teaches in that book something that was drilled into me, when, and especially when I learned about order flow from these guys. And, and, and by the way, that's a 100% true story. That's not made up. I literally, on my trading floor in New York City, we, we were NASDAQ traders. All of, When they changed the executions in 2007 from more manual dot orders, which are known as direct order turnaround for the specialists, they went from that to hybrid executions on the floor and it became all electronic. The specialist basically got steamrolled and they couldn't do it anymore. And they basically got kicked off the floor because there was no need for them anymore. But what he teaches in that book, which is what I'm teaching everybody here subconsciously through everything we do was, and I'll just use $46 as, as an example. He says, was one jacket purchased at $46 or were a hundred jackets purchased at $46. He's teaching you, and those guys taught me, and I'm teaching you, how much money was actually allocated to that price that you're giving significance to. That is what we are focusing on as a community when I'm teaching you about order flow. I do not use the word trend, and I specifically teach order flow because I am telling you and training you and hoping you take this and and deeply make it an ingrained part of you when you're looking at price action during the day. 
and I tell you there's no order flow in the stock, what I mean is that there's no commitment by large monies that have moved that stock in a meaningful way. What I'm telling you is if there's no order flow and you're looking to buy that stock, you are just freaking guessing because you are the only person looking to buy that stock right now. Can you get lucky? Sure. But wouldn't you rather look at a stock and say this stock has gone up two days, two weeks, two months, and just piggyback where somebody with massively deep pockets is actually moving the stock? That's what makes what we do different because I'm teaching you to spot when smart money, deep pockets are paying higher prices and doing it in a meaningful way. Then all we're doing as a community is finding a spot to hop on board. That's why what we do is different. I am literally teaching you what happened on the New York Stock Exchange. One of my best friends was a NASDAQ market maker for years. They traded order flow, which was deep pockets saying, here's the first 100,000, get me good prices and I'll send you more flow. That's what's going on on these charts. That's what I want you to learn from me. That's where confidence and conviction comes from because when you're looking at and I'm going to use this stock as an example because it, there's two different periods where it was amazing here week after week after week after week. And then we said it. The order flow changed, which is most obvious on the weekly charts, and we stopped trading it. So now if you take everything in the context of what we just reviewed, how does order flow look on this chart right now? How does that look? Two days of buying pressure. So if you go back to that book, that I mentioned before, and you put in the context what came into and was taught to all of everybody on my trading floor, this stock has two days of order flow. So when you're leaning into a stock and saying, I can't wait to get involved in this stock, ask yourself, if the New York Stock Exchange was still the screaming 5,000 person monstrosity that it was, and it still is, but it's all digital, how much noise has gone into this stock over the last couple of weeks and months in order for you to say, wow, Somebody's really doing something special here. Two days. You could trade the stock, but that obviously needs to have a different position sizing because why would you size up if the smart money hasn't sized up yet? Let that sink in. And the other side of that is if the smart money is sizing up, we need to size up too because they're paying higher prices, paying higher prices, paying higher prices. And then if you take back what I said, uh, go back to what I just said about if you can visualize the way he describes it in this book, and these guys did the set, almost said exactly the same way but differently, how many jackets were bought at $34? One jacket, and it got up there, and you're giving it all that meaning? How much? How, that's why I say buying pressure. That's why I say money allocated. How much money was allocated to that price that you are putting so much emphasis on? Was it a super light volume day and it traded up there or did it bounce and see a monster green candlestick? That's why the first scan I run every single day is two times volume. Every single day. It's the first scan I run because I want to say, did order flow step up in any stock today? I know some people don't like when I go off on a tangent, but let me tell you something. What we just talked about is the, is the deepest foundation of everything going on in my head during the day, which is why it's so easy for me to be patient when it's not obvious. I don't want to be the only person putting shares on. You're going to end up buying the high, selling the low, getting shaken out because nothing's going on. Something else that I could tell you as a little bit of a sneak peek, we're actually in the scanner that we're building. We're building our scanner to also scan for when stocks have increased volume on five minute candlesticks, a minimum of 100% of what they normally do. So that will pull out stocks that have order flow and tell us those stocks are super active right now. So if you combine the opening price, the opening hour and a five minute candlestick that closed near the high and traded double its normal volume, you bet your bottom dollar that should be something you should be taking a look at at that moment because it's probably igniting the next bullish move in that stock. So I can't tell you, this is the stuff that I, I, I have this stuff so deeply ingrained in me. It, like we, When we were on my trading floor, this was a big part of our trading floor. 
But this is why now, now maybe some of you understand like why I don't say uptrend. I don't say downtrend. Why I say order flow. We are literally looking to visualize. Did somebody send an order somewhere that was a lot of buying power and did it stay there? That's why you heard me coming into the last couple of days saying, this is great, but can it stay there? That's the deeper, that's the deeper meaning of everything that we're doing together. And uh, man, I just, man, woman, child, <laughs> this is where I get really pumped up. And again, if you're new to the community, I get loud when I get excited. And this is the stuff that makes what we do different. Okay. This is what we do different. Uh, the scan is in Finviz, but also that scan, all of my scans are inside of the tape reading lesson. So log into the member portal and you'll see scans and every single scan is in there. Okay. All right. I know that was a little bit of a tangent all off of just one stock. So um, I'm going to make sure that we have enough time here, but uh, I'm going to cut that portion out too, so that we can use that as a lesson as well. Okay. Uh, so we'll take a look at EAXAS. Um, okay. So let me just make sure I got the stock right. EXAS, not perfect order flow, but the moves are big. Okay. So Russ is qualifying the idea. So now everybody, yes, yes. So Helen, Helena typed it in. This is the, this is the book. I, if I, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1937 or something along those lines. I, the entire stock market traded like 300,000 shares for the day back then. But what a fascinating read on price action, volume, and tape reading. It's, it's like $8 worth 50 times that. Trust me. I don't say that lightly. Okay. So now look, this is, and I did, this is not intentional, but look what he says about the trade here, EXAS and order flow. So now can you look at this in a heartbeat and, and see what's going on and, and what your conviction level should be? You can definitely day trade this stock. It definitely has bigger ranges, but how much order flow? is in this stock right now. Where has smart money paid higher prices consistently, bought it near the low, pushed it up to the high? One day. So this meets the definition of a day trading stock if today's order flow matches yesterday. this I hope that this is eye-opening for everybody because this is a really structural thing I think that really will help everybody because that's really the biggest question, right? The market's overwhelming. What the heck am I supposed to focus on? That's why these are the charts that I look at with everybody in the game plan every day. I am training the community. I'm training you. I'm getting better myself at saying, is there something obvious here? Can I visualize big money sending orders down to the floor of the exchange and saying there's more flow behind that? Get me a good price. 